All right, to start off things, I have got a camera by Nikon here, which is the D5500 camera. Now, like I mentioned before, right now, it does not matter which brand I'm showing. Most of the things I'm gonna show right now will apply to almost, or rather I should not even say almost, it will apply to every uh, camera out there, DSLR, mirrorless of any uh, brand. And later on, like I mentioned before, I will have a separate video where I will be showing you the same things again on different brands like Canon and Sony also, okay? But for right now, let's just uh, look at some, you know, very, very basic things. For example, this is uh, the on button. So this is how you switch on your DSLR. And you can see the moment I do that, this is the LCD screen and you can see here, so this gets switched on. Uh, a couple of uh, other important things. I need to just switch off the camera right now before I show you the next thing because the next thing is to take off uh, this lens here. That is a specific feature, okay? Exclusive feature of a DSLR or a mirrorless camera that you can remove lenses and put another lens and whatnot, okay? So for that, each camera will have a lens removal button like this, okay? So you can just Open this and remove it, okay? So there is a white dot here. Sometimes it can also be a red dot. You'll find a corresponding white or red dot on the lens. Make sure when you're putting this together, okay? So when I release, by the way, when I uh, remove this lens, I press this button. Let me just do it again and then I'll show you the whole process. I forgot to mention that. So make sure you find the release button, which is either gonna be on the left or the right. So in this case, it's right here. And then keep it pressed and remove the lens. When you're putting it back on, those dots matter. So this white dot and this white dot should align first, like this, and then just rotate to the time here, this little click, that means it's locked now, okay? So just like this, you can, you know, put different lenses on your DSLR or uh, mirrorless camera, okay? Now, another important thing about this lens is that I can use this zoom ring, okay? So this ring here, large ring is called as a zoom ring. And you can see some numbers here right now. It says 18 to 55. We will be discussing what this means. This is the focal length of the lens in question. Focal length just means how much can I zoom in if I do this and how much can I zoom out? We'll actually be seeing how this works. The larger the number, the more you can zoom in as we're gonna find out uh, later on, okay? So this is how you zoom in, zoom out. We will, we will be doing a small exercise uh, for this when we actually see the uh, inside view of the camera, okay? Uh, then, there is the all important dial. This is your mode dial. So this helps you select the different mode of the camera. For example, here it's showing me M, which stands for manual mode. This is something we'll be spending a lot of time on. But for now, what I would suggest is you can either switch this to auto mode, okay? Or I like to actually, instead of auto, I like to use auto without flash. Because what happens is sometimes, uh, you know, when you just use the automatic mode and you switch on your camera, okay, it might just, it's not happening right now, it might just pop up the flash. So you can use automatic without flash. But right now, all these things are not that important. Ultimately, we will be using the uh, manual mode as you're gonna find out later, okay? A couple of other important things. So we did uh, see the screen, right? Now you can either shoot from the screen also. For example, in the Nikon cameras, you have this LV button, which stands for live view. In a lot of Canon cameras, this button is right here. I'll be showing you that later on when we see the Canon camera. But basically, if I press the live view button, okay, it's just basically gonna actually show me, okay, whatever is in front of me, just like how we used to see when we look at this part. If I switch it off again, you know, I can switch it off and on like this, okay? So one way of shooting is through the screen like this. You can actually see whatever is in front of you on the screen. This is called a shooting via the live view screen. Or you also have this part, which is more common, which is called as the viewfinder, where you look into this and shoot. And viewfinder shooting is more popular, as you're going to find out later, because it just makes everything much more uh, quicker. The autofocus that we're going to see later, no? what autofocus is, it just works much more quicker when you're shooting through the viewfinder. And you just have more control over what you're shooting when you're just looking through your eye, okay? But for video shooting and all these things, the screen view or the live view is can also be important. So just going through some of the basics, don't worry, we will be you know, handling all these things in detail also. One very important thing that I should point out is this little button here which says A and M. A 
Sometimes on your camera, this can be AF or MF. This stands for the focus mode. So this means, A means autofocus, M means manual focus. We're also going to be doing an exercise for this in just some seconds from now, where you will see what is the difference between both of them. But basically, both these modes allow you to focus on your subject as we'll see in that exercise. Right now, I would just tell you to keep this on AF or A, which stands for autofocus, since 99% of the times you will be using the technique of autofocus, though I will be telling you what manual focus is, because when you set it to M, suppose if I were to shift to M, nothing will happen if you just press the shutter button to focus, okay, as we're going to find out later on. Instead, you will have to use this ring. So this ring is separate from this ring. This was the thick ring, which is the zoom ring. But this is also a thin ring here, thin, thin ring here, which can also, as you'll see in that exercise, be used for focusing when this is set to manual focus, okay? So if you move this ring, uh, this one, sorry, it will just help you focus. We'll see this uh, later on, but it's hardly used. In some cameras, this manual focus ring can also be behind the zoom ring, okay? Sometimes the placement uh, can differ. And these are just like some of the basics. I know when you look at a camera body like this DSLR here, uh, you can feel like, gosh, there are so many buttons, so many things. Trust me right now, most of the things we don't even touch when we're actually doing a shoot, okay? Once you understand the basics as you're gonna do in this course, you're gonna find out if we really don't change too many things, okay? You will know exactly what to do. It's actually a very minimalist equipment because uh, it's very, very simple to use once you know uh, the basics. I know to look at it can be intimidating, but don't worry about it, okay? So go through this course and you will find out. Now, what are you gonna do is, there were two very important things here. Uh, the first thing was that we talked about something called as focal length. So I, talks, I told you that we can zoom in, zoom out. So we're going to see how that works actually by going behind the screen and seeing. Also, I will be showing you how autofocus and manual focus work and what exactly do they do because these two things are very, very important. Apart from this, the other things I don't even need to mention, like for example, you have a camera card slot here. You can put your uh, memory card here, okay? And behind, rather down here, you have your battery. So you can take out your battery and put it in. That's all uh, there is to it. Now, let's do this exercise for the focal length and also the autofocus and manual focus. 